political chaos uh, in the halls of the Tennessee State Capitol today. Uh, on the House side, two Democratic state lawmakers expelled over their lack of decorum when it comes to those uh, gun reform protests that have really swept Nashville since that school shooting just last Monday that killed six people. Right now, though, we want to start from the very beginning, this ongoing press conference uh, with two uh, of those uh, expelled state representatives voicing what they think was an injustice against them. Some called it unconstitutional there in the state. They're being flanked by their hundreds of supporters. Let's watch. ...of a child to gun violence again in the state of Tennessee. What happened today did nothing to solve problems and create solutions. I am sick and tired of inaction. Monday night, after these resolutions were introduced, I left to go to my son's Little League game. And the entire outfield was covered with red ribbons. And I am angry, I am tired, and I am frustrated that we even spent time dealing with this expulsion that undermines democracy in the state of Tennessee. Yeah. to find out, like many of the other parents here, where my relocation spot is in case my child is ever lost to gun violence. I didn't even know. It's sad that we live in a country where we have to know where a relocation point was. Would my Baptist church is just miles from where I grew up, and yet those families across this city had to go and find out, including Representative Mitchell's assistant, whether or not their child survived. Yet we spent time up here today dealing with this expulsion that undermines democracy. Representative Justin Jones is in the 52nd District. I represent the 53rd District here in Nashville. I was with him on election day when he was elected. The people know who Justin Jones is. I was lucky enough to be elected as a freshman in 2012 with Gloria Johnson. I know who Gloria Johnson is. She stands tall and fights for her community. And unfortunately, I haven't had enough time to serve with Justin Pearson, but everybody knows who Justin Pearson is and what he stands for. And so friends, I wanna leave you with this, and I'm gonna hand this over to the, my colleagues, but I stand hopeful today this is the lowest point in our state in the history of democracy as we know it in Tennessee. But I stand hopeful because of everyone in front of me and everyone behind me. I ask that you continue to show up, you continue to make your voices heard, and let's get real reform. Let's get real gun reform. And let me now introduce still my colleague, Representative Gloria Johnson. Thank you all so much. Thank you all for being here showing support for all of it, all of us. I just don't know how, if you realize how much it means to us. And, and to have people really pay attention to our ask, be, be quiet.
quiet in the gallery so that we could make sure there were witnesses to what happened in that room that today. We were so fearful they would remove our constituents from the gallery or remove the press. And we were able to keep everybody there. And it's so critical when these kinds of things are happening in the state, we are marching into fascism with a supermajority that has proven that absolute power corrupts absolutely. And, and I just cannot say enough about how proud I am always and forever to stand with these two brilliant young man, men who connect with their community, who really listen and understand the voters in their districts and across the state, who can tell everybody in the most powerful way. They speak, they spoke to our members. They won't admit it, I don't think, but they spoke to those hearts. I could see it yeah. on faces. Yeah. But still, what's the difference where I made it through mm -hmm. and these two young men did not make it through? I think you're right. We know. We know. We know. We know. But here's the difference. I think we might have these two young ma men back very soon. <laughs> in Knoxville multiple times. I couldn't get to Memphis because of my own uh, being in the house and everything, but I supported Justin Pearson from afar. I will continue to do that, and I will continue to ask all of you all to help make sure we get these fabulous young men back to the house. They thought they won today, but they don't realize. They don't realize when they started. They started a movement they can't stop. They started, they thought it was, that we were creating good trouble there, but we're on the outside now. And so I hope to see you all here on Monday. Monday for the House session, because every week until this session adjourns, we will return, whether we're inside the chamber or outside the chamber. Sustained nonviolence, non cooperation with a supermajority that we see right. destroy democracy today. Yeah. Yeah. They expelled a body, a, a party, a, a caucus that is majority white, except one member who was a little bit confused, yeah. expelled the two youngest black lawmakers right. Right. Yeah. for standing with our constituents who are demanding that we take action on the crisis of mass shootings. Yeah. Yeah. We said, we want to ban on assault weapons. They said we're going to assault democracy. Yeah. Shameful. Shameful. Yeah. And those people don't realize that what happened today is that they cemented their legacy on the wrong side of history. Yeah. That when their grandchildren read about them, they will be ashamed to say that Speaker Cameron Sexton was their relative. They'll be ashamed. I mean, that's why they're trying to ban history now. Come on, tell it. And so as we come back, we, we hope people return to this Capitol on Monday because this is just the beginning that's that right. when they expelled us, it wasn't about us individually. That's right. It was an attempt to ex expel and silence a movement. Yeah. Right. But they've done the opposite because we stand here with these young people who continue to, to stand in and sit in and die and whatever we have to do to elevate the issue right. that this shooting that happened in Nashville just a week ago, yeah. a week ago, Rather than pass laws that will address red flags and banning assault weapons and universal background checks, they passed resolutions to expel their colleagues. Yeah. Yeah. And they think that the issue's over. Yeah. We'll see you on Monday. Yeah.
It's always in the places and with the people who get pushed to the periphery. The people who get told to be quiet. The folks who get expelled. The people who are pushed to the margins. That show the society what it truly means to fight. What it truly means to get to the center of the conversation. To get to the issues that are at stake. And sometimes that takes breaking a few decorum rules. Sometimes to get from the periphery in the back of the house, you got to go to the well of democracy and demand that democracy be true for everybody, not just for rich white men in suits, not just for rich white people who got these positions of power perpetuating the status quo, not just those who are being supported by the NRA and gun lobbyists and the Tennessee Firearms Association, not just them, not, they aren't the ones that just get a voice. It's the folks in our districts get a voice too. And as you see, we'll demand it in the house, we'll get expelled for it too, and we'll demand it outside the house. miscalculation. Uh They've looked at a historicity that says that if you get rid of the Uh rabble-rousing, then you'll set yourself free from the issues for which the rabble-rousers were speaking. They've got this distorted view of of, of a Christian faith in some ways, you might say, Mm -hmm. but of a faith of people who are adversarial to the status quo. They've got, got it twisted a little bit. They have a lesson that says if you silence them, if you expel them, if you stop them. Mm. That you'll be able to stop the dream and the vision that is being projected forward. But it is not just the dream and the vision of the Tennessee Three. Uh-huh. It's not just the vision of we who have been expelled today. Yeah. Oh no, this vision that we have of a movement for justice to end gun violence in the state of Tennessee. Yeah. It was spoken in prophecies well before we got here. Yeah. And black mothers in cotton fields and black fathers who were stripped away from their children. It, it, it started in this country. Yeah. Yeah. In the places where people were three-fifths of a person. Yeah. It started in this country where the people who believed in democracy the most, yeah. but who did not get the benefits of democracy at all. Still fought, still marched, still spoke up, still showed up, and never gave up. And so with that vision, with that spirit, with that ideology, with that version of reality, we showing up Monday. And we need you to show up Monday. Because our schools need to be safer. Our communities need to be safer. And they need to be safer for us. They need to be safer by the legislation we want. Not by the legislation Smith and Wesson wants. Not by legislation the National Rifle Association wants. And if we must be out of order to get justice. If we must be out of order to get fairness. If we must be out of order to lift those who've been pushed to the bottom, to the top of the conversation in the state house, then that's what we'll do. But one thing we won't do is ever quit. We will never 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 quit. We can't thank the Tennessee Three enough for coming out and speaking with us today. Again, the reason we're out here is because they stood with us and we are standing with them. And something so unique and so powerful about these representatives is they have encouraged young people to find their voices in their own communities. And to center that, a student who came all the way from Knoxville today, along with the hundreds of students who came from Memphis, who came from Knoxville, who came from across the state to support these three representatives. We would like to welcome student William Mendoza. Are we pissed? Yeah. Are we pissed? Yeah. We are pissed. 
My name is William Mendoza, and I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee, and I am in Gloria's, Gloria Johnson's best district. <laughs> and I just want to say a few words about Gloria Johnson and why I support her and why I, I love her. Gloria Johnson has always been there for me, and not just me, but all of District 90. As a son of a pastor, my father always tells me a representative is here to help the people that's and fight for the people. That's and that's who Gloria Johnson is. Yeah. Are we pissed? Yeah. Are we pissed? Yeah. We are pissed. I just want to say that 57%, 57%, that's how much percent Gloria Johnson won in November the 8th. Because people knocked doors, because people called, because people believed in Gloria Johnson and in her will, and that she will fight for us just like we fought for her today. Today is a victory for Knoxville, a victory for East Tennessee, but not a victory for Tennessee. Because there's two people that did not get elected. They didn't get the vote. That is disgusting. That is disgusting. That is disgusting? I can't hear you, that is disgusting. That is disgusting. 57%. I will also like to say that I have an IEP, so I struggle with English and math, and as some people know, that Gloria Johnson worked with children like that. My counselor, Ms. Orper from CMA, actually contacted I actually contacted because my grades were slipping. And even while all this was happening, even while she was protesting, even while she was getting threat that she was gonna kicked out, what did Gloria Johnson did? Gloria Johnson came to me and came and told me, do, do you need help, William? I am here for you. Because that who Gloria Johnson is, she's not a representative for Democrats. She's not a representative for Republicans. She's not a representative for independents. She's a representative of District 90, of all people, not just one. Gloria Johnson is not only the representative of District 90, but she is the representative of Tennessee. And we will stand tall with her. I might be 5'5", five five, might be short, but we will stand tall with Gloria, and we will stand with Tennessee 3. We will stand with Tennessee 3. But Tennessee 3, we will stand with Tennessee 3. Two last things I would like to say. Two last things. We will not bow down. We will not bow down. We didn't bow down today, and we will not bow down tomorrow, and we will never bow down because one of the representatives doesn't do our will. When children like me are dying in high schools, when children like me are scared, and the representatives are not doing anything, bless their heart. Bless their heart. We will come for their seats. We will organize. We will come ten times better. And we will get like and we will get people like Gloria Johnson, Justin Pearson, and Johns and Johnson Jones. Sorry about that. We will get people like that. We will get people like that. And we will elect them in Tennessee. And when Tennessee isn't known because our education system is low, when but we know Tennessee when we know Tennessee about how our education system is up, when we learn that Tennessee is actually going to be one of the best states in the world, one of the best states in the United States, and I just fake like Bill Lee says, we will be number one one day because of people like y'all. So one last thing. To all the Republicans in the State House, I, I, I hope you're watching. Bless your heart. Thank you. Thank you again to William. Again, my name is Ezra and I'm an organizer at March for Our Lives, but most foremost, I'm a community member at Nashville and a student at Vanderbilt. 
I'd like to thank everyone for coming here, but above all else, I'd like to thank the people behind me. Not only the Tennessee Three, but the powerful coalition members who have been mobilizing and organizing for the last 10 days straight. What we would like to say is that the fascist move of these representatives is in the name of claiming to represent the will of the people, but we are the people. Yeah, we are. Thousands of students across the city in elementary, middle school, high school, and university, along with teachers, elected officials at all levels, from school board members all the way to our elected representatives behind us, showed out consistently in the last 10 days. And they showed out on Monday in this very plaza making history. And instead of listening to us, the legislatures tried to silence us, but it didn't work. Once again, this coalition turned out from across the state. We sat outside and in the rotunda and in the gallery for 12 hours. Because we won't be ignored, and this isn't over. The coalition that we have built is in response to Nashville's pain and born out of tragedy. But it is a force of change. We are a force of change. To the representatives who chose to ignore us today, no, you have depended on tactics of voter suppression, low turnout, and gerrymandering. No, that you have depended on silencing our movements and attempting to get away with increasingly extremist actions. No more. Young people are voting in record numbers. Young people are deciding our policies. Young people are the tipping point and we won't stop fighting until we create the world that we deserved to grow up in. Five years ago, I joined this movement at 13 years old, organizing a walkout at my middle school. Come on, all right. This week, I have met six-year-olds, I have met 12-year-olds, I have met 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds, 16-year-olds, 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds, 60-year-olds, 70-year-olds, 80-year-olds who have turned out and have showed up consistently for this community. People who have never protested before and people who have been doing this work for decades have to come together in response to this. This movement is stronger when we're together, which is exactly what we are. To the people across the nation who are rightfully enraged and trying to stand with Tennessee, join us. We need your support. Okay, so a uh, pretty raucous uh, rally here in the Tennessee State Capitol uh, after a, really a marathon but historic day. You see those two gentlemen uh, behind this speaker. That's Justin Jones and Justin Pearson. Uh, today, their colleagues voted them out of the Tennessee State House, expelled them. Uh, and then their colleague there, Gloria Johnson, she survived by one vote uh, over their behaviors, actions, lack of decorum. That's according to their colleagues on the other side of the aisle. During massive protests in the state capitol in the wake of the Nashville school shooting, calling on more to be done there at the state level when it comes to gun violence, so much so that President Biden weighed in today uh, about this on Twitter. He says, three kids and three officials gunned down in yet another mass shooting. And what are GOP officials focused on? Punishing lawmakers who join thousands of peaceful protesters calling for action. It's shocking, undemocratic, and without precedent. That's President Biden's views on the whole matter happening, playing out there in Nashville today.